the iPhone XS and XR roughly six months later. I've been using all three of these phones, the XS and XR and the XS Max, on and off alternatingly over the last half of a year. Now here's the good news. I feel like you're probably fine with any one of them. They're all pretty close and they're pretty subtle variations on each other. How do I feel about the phones? They're fine. Maybe that doesn't sound that exciting, but the updates in the XS and XR compared to the iPhone X really aren't all that tremendously memorable, but they do add up to a really good phone. If you're looking for a phone as a laptop and a really reliable product, that's great. These are great products, but they're not really standout in a landscape maybe of other emerging technologies. But they're Apple's most reliable products, I'd say by a mile, as far as the most polished pieces of tech that they make right now in their entire product lineup. But which one should you get? I feel like the iPhone XR is still the best choice. I feel like the XR, for its price, you're not gonna miss anything, I still feel that way. The battery life is notably better. The screen, I don't miss anything from the XS and XS Max. And the size feels right. This still feels like a good hand size, not too big, not too small, easy to read, really good. There's only one thing that I regret about the XR, and that's not having a dual camera on the back. Not a lot of people need that, but having the 2X optical zoom means that, let's say if I'm framing something, shooting something for work, another product or getting a portrait of somebody, I rely on that a lot. So for me, that's a pretty useful feature. I'd love to see it at some point. Maybe this year is when they'll get that. Camera tech has evolved a lot. Apple is not necessarily at the top of that game. In fact, there are a lot of other cameras that are standing out with all sorts of other features, camera qualities, lenses, uh, Google's Night Sight in particular for the Pixel 3. That's a feature I'd love to see on an iPhone. But overall, these cameras are really, really good. In particular, video is fantastic. Now, as far as still photos go, I think they're great, but you can see that other cameras do better in certain instances, and I think that that's something to pay attention to. Cameras are really stepping up their game across a whole bunch of phones. So right now, these feel like they're holding their own, but they're not necessarily at the top of the pack. Now look at the Samsung Galaxy S10. They have three lenses on the back, which allows an even different perspective and a wider angle. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see more zoom modes. Huawei is pushing the territory. Uh, a lot of other companies are pushing the territory. And Google is advancing things through its software very aggressively. I still feel like Apple's in a really good space, but I'd like to see a lot more. Let's talk about Face ID. Face ID is now one and a half years old. It emerged with the iPhone X. And I'm not a big fan of using my face to unlock things all the time. I did like fingerprint, but I will acknowledge that there's nothing out there that's as reliable or as well implemented as Face ID in other phones. I think Apple's corner of the market right now on that as far as biometrics and face unlocking. It's well integrated into payments. It's integrated into passwords and all sorts of other things. It generally works. Now, whether it always works at the right angle or the right distance, that's still pretty fiddly. I've gotten pretty used to it. And I think compared to the alternatives, I would like to see a Touch ID. Still, I miss it. But Samsung's underscreen fingerprint sensor that I've tried does feel slower. So in the end, I think Face ID is a pretty cool feature. And I think it's here to stay. And I also think notches are here to stay because they're also in every other phone. Now let's address something that's not really iPhone related, but it's iPhone related. Air power is gone, it's dead, RIP. So what now? Well, I wasn't necessarily going to be interested in air power depending on how expensive it was, but it was holding the fort on the idea of a faster charging solution for the iPhone. The iPhone still uses lightning and it charges wirelessly at a slower speed than most other phones. That needs to change. Now, sure, you could buy an adapter brick, you could get something to connect to USB-C solutions, but this should have USB-C or it should have faster wireless Qi charging. What about something like rear charging? Samsung Galaxy S10 has the ability to charge its earbuds and the watch right onto the back or another phone. I mean, you could charge the Apple Watch or AirPods maybe through rear charging on the iPhone. That's not the same as air power, but I'd like to see some revamp of charging on these phones. Now, one thing that's changed since the iPhone XS and XR came out last year is a whole bunch of new phone technologies. 5G is being talked about everywhere, and we've gotten a chance to see that a little bit. 
folding phones, all sorts of wild folding phone ideas. Now, those may not be coming out in an iPhone anytime soon, which is probably okay because 5G is gonna take a long time to deploy and folding phones are about $2,000 so far, which makes the iPhone XS and XR seem downright cheap. If there's one thing that I've really learned about these phones over the last six months, it's that I haven't thought about them all that much. That may sound like a negative, but if you think about phones as a reliable product that you lean on all the time, it means that these phones haven't had any problems for me. They've been there, they've worked well, they've been fast, they've been functional. And I think of phones now as laptops. In that sense, Apple is making an incredibly polished product and they're making one of the best phones out there and they have for a while. I just think that right now, these are phones that we understand and we use and they're not necessarily pushing into crazy new territories other than maybe face ID or augmented reality. Will iOS 13 introduce new ideas to these iPhones in terms of software? Will the new iPhone coming in the fall have even more stuff to offer? Probably. Right now, these are still really reliable and really fast. Just don't expect them to knock your socks off on weird new ideas.